Hello everyone and welcome to the very first episode of Things That Matter with Matt Starkey. Today I have a very special guest here with me, somebody who I wanted to host for a very long time and he is no one else than Chief Executive of Freelancer.com, Matt Barry. Thanks for having me. How are you, Matt? Great. This is a podcast about people with the name Matt, right? <laughs> yeah. <that's laughs> So, uh, yeah, I've been dreaming about this moment for some time now, you know, as we are number one ranked in search on freelancer.com and you are the person that built this platform from the, from the ground up. So how are you? How is everything? Well, I'm amazed to be in front of a YouTube star. I've seen all the amazing content you've produced over, over the last year in the, helping freelancers get from zero to hero. So it's, it's, I'm also honored to be here as well. Uh, so this is a great start because my first question is actually about that. What is your advice to freelancers or even new freelancers, you know, when starting out, what they should be, you know, taking care of? What a time to be alive, <laughs> right? Let me tell you, like the internet has connected up all the world's population. I think there's over 5 billion people now on the internet. And so your ability to reach people all around the world and sell them products, services, work with people, to find interesting ways to, to generate income and create the future. It's never been a better time or a better place. So being a freelancer is very special because you are an independent, free entrepreneur yep. building a business and you can work on whatever you want, whatever you want, however you want and make you know great money and see great products and services be developed at the same time. Uh, exactly. And, uh, you know, COVID was a horrible thing, but at the same time, it showed the capability of the world and that you can actually do business all across the globe, you know, from your home, from your room. So that's crazy. Uh, how do you see the world accelerating from this point on? Is well, it's, it's, it's funny you mentioned COVID because when the world's in a terrible place, freelancing takes off, yeah. right? And we saw that originally with the global financial crisis and we saw it again with COVID. And there's really three things that are happening in these times of crisis. One is that obviously people are going online looking for work. The second is that businesses are looking to cut costs and find more efficient ways and easier ways and try new technologies and approaches to hiring people and they're going online to do so. And the third thing that happens is a lot of startup businesses form in bad times because during COVID, your cafe couldn't open. Yeah. And so what do you do in the meantime? Let's start a drop shipping company for cocktails or something rather. I need a website, I need an app, I need what, what have you, product develop, marketing materials, whatever it may be. From here, it's crazy times because technology is moving so fast and there's no better place to be exposed to technology than in the world of freelancing. Because on, 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 on Freelancer, for example, we've done 22 million projects. Every day, there's thousands of new projects coming in. Yeah. And you're exposed to a fire hose of what everyone's doing all around the world with the latest and greatest in technology. That's insane. And because of a lot of my audience is very young, you know, they're like from 15, 16, 17, 20. If you have to start, you know, from scratch, what would you tell to your 20 year old self, like how to start, what to do? Like, do you have any piece of advice? Just do it. <laughs> I mean, as you discover, as you get older, nobody really knows you know, uh, really, um, everyone's kind of faking it till they make it in some way, right? Like, like no one taught the president of the United States to go to president school, right? These big CEOs are big corporations. Nobody really taught them to be a CEO, right? You, the, the way you learn is by getting the boat out there in the harbor and anyone can hold the rudder when the sea is calm, but when the, the storm hits, that's how you really learn, right? And so you go, go out there and just, you know, it's, there's never been a better opportunity. If you've got a product or service that resonates with the market now, your ability to distribute that product or service is unparalleled in history. You, you know, Chat GPT just came out recently, went from zero to 100 million users in two months. Yeah. Right. So if you've got something that, that's great, it just takes off, right? Exactly. And, and, and with the freelancing, you're master of your own destiny. You can work on any type of project you like. Um, you, you can, you can um, it's, it's create a job rather than take a job. You can go from, um, you know, client to client, like a hummingbird goes from flower to flower, right? That's kind of why we've got hummingbird and our, hummingbird and our logo. And you know, you can kind of build your skills, constantly be learning, and constantly be interested, constantly being excited, and you're running your own business. And what you what you discover quite rapidly being a freelancer is, if you're good at this, like Bright Doc is, <laughs> you you get more clients than you as a person can individually handle. So then you've got an inflection point where you go, oh my God, I'm starting a business, I'm hiring people, I've got, I've got an office full of people now. And you're servicing people all around the world, working on all sorts of amazing things. And um, it, it, it's really interesting because you get to choose what you want to work on and when you want to work on it. I, that's great because I, I couldn't agree more. When I started out, it was like on Freelancer, 
it was six, seven years ago, and my first project was $9, you know, and people are speaking that, you know, uh, small projects, and that is the issue, but there is so many massive projects, you know, today we are working multiple projects that are six uh, figures and above. Mm. We are working with clients like uh, Airbus, a freelancer, Sky News, you know, mm. many brands that are, that are massive, that are hiring us mm. over and over again, and I see that there is a couple of um, uh, potential projects that will be a million dollar in the ball. Mm. So, uh, what would you say to them? Like, uh, why, why do you think that they have this obstacle of starting out and there is such a massive opportunity from the comfort of their own home? People are afraid of the unknown, mm -hmm. and running your own business and being being your own person is a very difficult thing for people to to really have the confidence to go out there and, and, and do it. I mean, a lot of people just like to go to work nine to five and be told what to do and, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, go into work and have a boss and they go home. And, and I, 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 yeah, to actually go out there and run your own business, be your own person, is, is very challenging for people because there's, there's risks involved. But it, no risk, no reward, right? Exactly. And, and it, one of the most fulfilling things in your life is um, trying things struggling at them, <laughs> overcoming those struggles and actually achieving, right? And, you know, it, success is not handed to anyone overnight. It is a constant, you know, roller coaster. <laughs> You're on top of the world. Yeah. I want a new client. Oh, my <laughs> God, the client's canceling me. Oh, my God, I want another client. <laughs> oh, I'm not working for NASA. Whatever. Again, so it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a journey, right? And that journey requires grit and it builds resilience. And ultimately, it turns you into a great operator. And I think... I look at some of the things the freelancers are doing now. It's incredible. And there's, a, there's an, an, a whole journey where maybe you start off as a freelancer doing $10 projects, but one day you end up working on a million dollar attempt. We've got, we've got a $6 million project right now. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very complicated, high end in, 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 in science. Um, uh, but it, it really is you know, so rewarding to build things. And I think going out there and, and, and you know, starting off as a freelancer and working on freelance.com, we offer really a a, a, a slingshot or yeah, to, to 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 doing that because you can start off on something very simple and you get ten dollar projects and build your confidence. You've got hundred dollar projects, thousand dollar projects, ten thousand dollar projects. You don't touch a thousand uh, dollar project, hundred thousand dollar projects, mm -hmm. right? Like so, and 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 then you, you the, the scale of the clients you work with grows, and the sophistication of the work you do grows, and the quality of the people you manage to hire in your organization grows, and it's just the most rewarding thing building a company. Yeah, that's great. And I know that you have an engineering background and you started your first business, then it was acquired by Intel, if I'm not wrong. Mm -hmm. And then you uh, acquired the platform that was there before Freelancer. Yep. And then you built it into this massive, amazing company that has 67 million members today. So mm. could you tell me about that? How did it all go and how does one go from, you know, being an engineer to, you know, having, uh, well, let's say, an empire? Well, the good thing about engineering is, and, and computer science and so forth, is that you are solving problems for people, mm -hmm. right? So it's a very mathematical um, uh, you know, discipline where you learn to solve complex problems, right? And problem solving is the essence of being an entrepreneur, right? Um, so I did my original degrees in electrical engineering and computer science and physics. And um, you, know, you, you learn how to build products, mm -hmm. right, using, using software. And that's or hardware in the case of electrical engineering, and that's exciting. And um, a long story cut short, but after I graduated, I kind of worked in Silicon Valley for a startup, and then came back to Australia eventually, and, and started really my, my first real company. I had a few companies before my first real company, which um, we built a, a chip for doing high-speed scanning of network traffic um, uh, for security. So you could load virus signatures into the chip and scan you know, gigabit traffic for viruses or what have you. Ultimately, the company did did uh, sell to Intel uh, ultimately. And then uh, for my next company, I was looking for something to do and I stumbled across this website called Get a Freelancer. And uh, it was back in 2007 or 2008. And um, I thought my downtime, I was, it's kind of funny. In, in, in 1995, I told my mother to build a website for her business. She does arts and crafts and textiles and wholesale, what have you. If she did that, it should have been the, the Jeff Bezos you know, <laughs> of, of that space. But fast forward to 2007, she still hadn't done it. So I uh, said, okay, I'll help you build a website. Now, I, I immediately discovered the error of my ways because she's got 10,000 products with poor descriptions, no photos, this, that, the other. And I, it was a huge amount of data entry had to be done. And so I was trying to get a little brother or sister or a friend of mine to do the, to do the data entry. And it was really frustrating, like really frustrating trying to get people to do project work mm -hmm. in the traditional way, right? You, 
you, you go and say, hey, I've got this job, I'll pay you $2,000, you know, it's working on a computer, it's in your own time at home. And I just, felt, I, maybe it's the kids of today, but it, it was always like, yeah, this job is boring. And I go, I know it's boring. That's why I'm paying you $2,000. Otherwise I'll do it, right? Like, you know, uh, you know, I've got soccer practice, I've got exams, what have you. And it took, after four months, the project went nowhere. And in frustration, I went to the internet and I searched for, you know, how do I get some data entry done online? And I stumbled across this website called Get a Freelancer. It was built by a guy called Magnus Tabell uh, out of Sweden. And I posted my project and I didn't really know what was going on, right? Because I, I, I wasn't really exposed to the new world of working online uh, and freelancing and crowdsourcing. And I went away to lunch and I came back about three hours later and my inbox had exploded. <laughs> I had 73 people saying, I'll do it for 2,000, 1,500, 400, 300, whatever. And I was like, wow, this is incredible. First of all, I can't believe that all these people want to do my job when I've taken, taken four months to find someone. Like three hours later, I've got 70 something people bidding on my project. This is just unbelievable. This can't be real. Today, it's even more liquid. Today, you get 70 people bidding in you know, 15 minutes. But, um, but, but, but it's, it really is that moment that goes off in your head when you go, you know what? It's actually so easy to find people to do things for me now, right? And it doesn't matter what the skill set is or how sophisticated or complex the skill set is. 67 million people on the freelance. So there's a lot of people. Whatever you need done, you can you can get done. And um, and so my first thing was like, wow, that's incredible. I can now that solves a lot of problems for me being a sole entrepreneur looking for my next company mm-hmm. because I can literally sit at home in my underpants, put a credit card down, and build an empire. Yeah, right. So, and that's what freelancer does. It's 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 a dream accelerator, right? Like it, it it and and it's just so easy and 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 efficient to do so. And I know you've got a lot. Of Great content online. If, if you are thinking of getting a freelancer a go, check out <laughs> that's content. Subscribe below, ring the bell. But um, um, so I thought, what sort of business should I build? What have you? And a very long story cut short, I ended up going, you know, I actually love this business so much, I want to buy it. So I ended up buying Get a Freelancer and I then b- bought effectively, I think, 27 other businesses. I can't remember the exact number. It's been so many. <laughs> I bought all the competitors of freelancer that I could, that I could, I could, I could find. I merged them all together. I created the largest online crowdsourcing and freelancing website in the world, which is freelancer.com today. That's amazing. And now that we speak about freelancing, you know, the world definitely changed, you know, from 2007 until today. Yep. today. So what do you think, you know, there is a massive rise in AI in the last few months. So what are the trends, you know, from this point onwards? What will it, what well, AI is a massive trend. Let me tell you, I'm old enough to have gone through periods of time where the world changed forever, mm-hmm. right? And one of those periods of time was before mobile phones, after mobile phones, right? And I remember like you'd, you'd, you'd go meet a girl at a bar and you'd want to go meet her next Friday and you'd get a, you'd just agree to meet her next Friday and she would just show up if you were lucky, right? <laughs> or you got wrote down her phone number and you had her phone, home phone number and you'd, you'd arrange to meet in the town hall steps and maybe she would turn up, maybe she wouldn't turn <laughs> up. If she wouldn't turn up, you're like, what do I do? Do I try and call her? The phone box is five minutes that way or what have you. But after mobile phones, of course, the world changed forever. The other thing, uh, other moment in time where the world changed forever was before the internet, after the internet, right? So, um, you know, the internet obviously been developed in academia for, for decades before, but 1994 to 1995 was the year the world changed. In 1994, the gigs had email addresses. In 1995, your grandmother had an email address, <laughs> right? So the world changed forever. I mean, I don't think many people today probably listening to your uh, podcast to because the younger demographic knew what it was like before email, after yep. email, before the internet, after the internet. And it's crazy. Of course, every business now is an internet business in some way, shape, or form. I think the the advances in generative AI are going to be bigger than the deployment of the commercial internet. Yep. I think it's going to be absolutely wild what's going to happen um, with, with generative AI because what effectively the breakthrough is, is Google figured out a thing known as the transformer. And the transformer is really like this little um, you know, circuit effectively or bit of software effectively that has fig- it mimics the human brain and has allowed artificial intelligence to scale mm-hmm. the training data that it looks at and the compute power it can use. And the results get better the more data you feed the AI and um, the more compute power you add. And in fact, the results get super, they're super linear. They're actually yeah. much better than the data you feed in, you know. And there's some pretty surprising things happening in the space. For example, um, uh, you know, if you look at chat GPT, you know, uh, you know GPT-1 came out and um, yeah, it was very primitive and no one really heard about it other than computer scientists. 
GPT-2 came out. No one really heard about it. GPT-3 came out. People are starting to hear, oh, there's some software that OpenAI has that you can type in a prompt and you'll get a response back. It's okay, but you'd never really use that in real life. It kind of gives you specs and answers. They're like, great. All of a sudden, chat GPT came out with 3.5 and it's like, wow, these responses are these pretty, it's pretty damn good, right? GPT-4 comes out. All of a sudden, the software can pass the bar exam top the graduate you know the gre top the sats you know etc there's some some pretty magical things are happening in ai and it's across every white collar job now that there's tooling that will lift anyone's t- ability to to superhuman levels of talent by using the ai tools and speaking about ai do you think that ai has the capability to replace fully freelancers you know should we be afraid or will this be the ultimate tool to actually, you know, aid you, assist you, and you will have so much more time to do things. You will be responsible for sales. Of course, you will be responsible for overseeing the client processes, but at the, at the end, you know, they will be, or it will be the one performing the work. Uh, it's very hard to predict the future because the future seems to be moving faster and faster <laughs> towards us in many different ways. But I, I can talk about the short term and the, the medium term. Um, right now, what these tools are doing is they're turning anyone into a superpowered human in a particular area, right? So if yeah, if I can um, illustrate a little bit before or maybe draw a stick figure on a piece of paper, I can now using Midjourney and I can I can generate photorealistic, yeah, amazing illustrations. Um, using ChatGPT, before I could write an essay or take me a long period of time. Now using ChatGPT, I can get a punch out an essay, I can make some edits, I can yeah, exactly. play with a prompt and what have you. So what, it, what it's doing now is it's it's really giving everyone superpowers. And it's giving it's 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 giving people with any level of ability amazing um, uh, powers to to work in really any field that can be done with a computer, um, and and so what it's what what it's doing is for all the freelancers is making them all super skilled, right? So it's lifting the available um, uh, talent pool of very very highly skilled talent in any field you can possibly imagine. Um, what it's also doing for the freelancers is it's also enabling them to, to deliver very, very, very high quality work, maybe even a big step up from where they were before at a lower cost price because they can get the things done a lot more efficiently and a lot, a lot quicker. For now, it's an incredible productivity tool. I mean, I think it's 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 like it's akin to the leap from having no computer on your desk to a computer, right? <laughs> And and now computer and then yeah. AI, it's like another leap again, right? Like it, like the human brain is really wired to think linearly, and this is really exponential. So I don't know where it ends up, but for for now, it is incredible in terms of the productivity you can get, um, you know, it, just in your everyday life, using the tools or using freelancers. The freelancers now have superpowers. Yeah, superpowers they could get work done, very high quality. Instantly. Well, I'll give you an example. I used it this morning. So <laughs> we, we agreed to sit down and do a bunch of videos that are on a range of different topics. And we thought we'll make little 10 minute videos. And we had a whole bunch of different ideas. We asked you know, some of our staff, you know, what would be some, some ideas mm-hmm. we can talk about, whatever. We dumped them into one of the, the groups on Freelancer. We had all this content in there and replies, but it was all very unstructured data. And all I did was I cut and pasted the whole thing into um, ChatGPT. And I said, here are uh, notes that Matt Barry, CEO of Freelancer, and Matt Starkey, CEO of BrightDoc, have come up with for a series of video content, maybe 10 minutes or less, on these topics. Can you please break it into a coherent, uh, cogent um, series of topics with some bullet points we should cover from the notes that we've created, from the, from the ideas and the concepts that have been contributed? And it punched out a, a whole bunch of ideas. And we took that, we enhanced that. And, yeah. and today, today we, we got... We got a whole bunch of videos done in lightning fast yeah. times that would normally take days or weeks to plan. Yeah, sure. yeah. And the preparation for that would take, you know, a lot of time. The briefs, yes. you know, sitting down with the teams and everything. Yeah. You know, we came with this, uh, had a brilliant chat. So yeah, it's fantastic. Um, I had, I won't waste too much of your time. I have a few more questions for our audience, which are more on the you know personal side. Yep. So one of those questions is. Uh, like you work a lot outside of work. What are your favorite favorite things to do? You know, how do you relax? Do you do you travel? Do you you know? Yeah, I, I kind of give myself more work all the time. <laughs> I, I kind of I'm running three businesses at the same time. Um, so the freelancer group has got three main businesses. One is freelancer.com, which I'm sure everyone on your channel will know. The other is escrow.com, which is a payments business for very large value or complicated items. So if you want to buy a 
house or a car or a boat or an aeroplane or jewelry, gemstones, diamonds, jet parts, mm. you know, um, vacation rental somewhere, whatever. Um, you know, you wouldn't pay with PayPal or a credit card because when things go wrong, they go very wrong. <laughs> uh, and also they don't handle high value payments. Yes. So we deal with payments that are $10,000, $100,000, million, $10 million plus. So um, I run that business and I also run Loadshift, which is a big heavy haulage freight marketplace, which midweek does more freight than the earth to the moon, 400,000 kilometers of freight. And we move uh, we move the very difficult, complicated, they call it ugly freight um, uh, on the roads. So uh, it's mainly trucking freight and mainly things like machinery and grain and um, demountable uh, mining camps. And if you see a giant boat being yeah, with a police escort down the road or an excavator, or you know, it's probably um, a load shift in, in certain parts of the world. In a way, you avoided my question. Is, <laughs> is, there, is there a free time, you know, where you enjoy, you know, things that are not work-related or, you know, uh, you, right. you love your work so much that... <laughs> I've, 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 come to, I've come to kind of a part of me because because Prouser is a global business and um, with all the, the whole, all the group I've got of companies, there's, it's uh, always on all around the world. I, I, do, I do try and somehow uh, mix a bit of uh, pleasure with business. Sometimes uh, obviously visiting you to do work and then I get to enjoy uh, Croatia tonight before I jump out on the plane tomorrow. But um, yeah, we're kind of like trying to go, trying to go skiing. Mm-hmm. Um, I, 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 I was lucky to do it once this year. Um, uh, and uh, other than that, just, you know, I write essays and I go on podcasts. I find that kind of enjoyable, even though it's... Um, uh, a bit of work, but uh, I like talking about various topics, whether it's um, uh, you yeah, know uh, about the economy or what have you. So that's yeah, that, that's brilliant. Yeah, I I can completely understand. You know, I'm uh, um, far behind you, but still, you know, I I truly love my work, and you know, sitting here with you is kind of an amazing pleasure. You know, that I cannot replace with any kind of wellness, saunas, or anything like that. Yeah. And uh, maybe um, my uh, last question is because I speak a lot about building businesses and mm. going from freelancer to having an agency and stuff like that. Yep. Um, how do you decide what is a good employee, what is a bad employee, and what do you like to see in an employee or, or on the opposite side, what you do not like to see in an employee? That's my last question. We can finish with that. <laughs> I only hire PhDs. Poor, hungry, driven. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to hire people that want to achieve something in their life. You know, I say to people, I don't, if you want a job, don't come work for me. If you want a career, come work for me. I only want people that want to achieve something in their life and take on responsibility. I've got um, some company values um, for freelancer that I didn't come up with. The staff all came up with independently. One is take charge. What does the data say? What can I improve today? And be a pro sports team, you know, act now, hire, hire the best, be the best, right? And change lives. Yep. And so I think very much that embodies, you know, how I think. Yeah, you know, I'm I we do a lot of things uh in the group, way too many things. And we always we do it Elon Musk style with way too many people, but way too many things. We try and think big. So I'm always looking for people to take responsibility on and be a leader. And yeah, the best look, I, I wrote an essay once about 10 years ago. It's on LinkedIn. I was one of the LinkedIn influencers on, on LinkedIn, the original influencers. It was kind of interesting at the time. It was a hundred of us, Deepak Chopra, Richard Branson, Matt Barry. Uh, but, um, but I wrote an essay called, if anyone ever drive, if, if anyone ever asks you if you can drive a forklift, just say yes. It's a very strange topic, but this was one of the early pivotal moments in my life where um, my parents bought a warehouse from someone um, and I was it up there while I was negotiating buying that warehouse and I was just yeah, young kid, I was, I was like 14 or 15 years old, and um, the, the owner who was retiring mm-hmm. came up to me and said, and there's a forklift there because it's a warehouse, right? And um, he said, um, Matt, can you, can, you, can you drive the forklift? And I said, I don't know. He said, if anyone ever asked you in life, can you do something, just give it a go, right? You're not going to be sent to forklift school, right? How hard can it be? It's got a wheel. You can turn it left and right. There's a pedal to go forwards and the pedal to stop. Right, just you know, Makes give it a sense. go, and I was like, "Wow!" So yeah, I got the forklift. And I was five minutes later, I was driving a forklift around. As a fourteen or fifteen year old kid, it's something I thought I'd never be able to drive a forklift. Mm-hmm. Right, and five minutes later, because this guy said to me, "If anyone ever asked you, you can do it. Just say yes, and you figure it out on, on, the, on the go." And I, so I did it. Figured it on the go. And as, as you kind of get older in the world, do you realize that everyone's winging it? Right, everyone, whether it's the, the president or the prime minister or the exactly. CEO, or whatever, everyone's winging it, yep. right? They, no, no, none of them were formally, really formally trained for the jobs they're in and everyone 
is just you know figuring out as they go along and you know i you know, life is a series of bad decisions but um it's only through mistakes that you discover how to you know be successful you know the thing that they're saying you know anyone can hold the rudder when the sea is calm but when the, when the storm hits that's where you really learn how to be a sailor right like and it's it's, it's basically a b testing yeah right exactly. yeah you try this you try that okay that worked that didn't work and then double down and the double down and yeah. okay it didn't work again okay well, okay <laughs> do this right and and so in life, just take the opportunities and seize them as they come along because life is very short and you want to do great things in your life. So, Brilliant. I think we couldn't end better than, you know, with this quote. So thank you so much for coming today. I really appreciate this. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I cannot say anything more than that. Thanks. Thanks, Abe. Yeah.